Hey, what's up my people, Corey Reese here. Hope everybody has been awesome. So listen, I'm gearing up for a shoot and I found a cool way to be able to get a wireless feed um, to an external monitor, a portable monitor from my R5C. So I wanted to share it with you guys because I know some people have been asking me because if you don't know, um, the R5C obviously still has the Wi-Fi radio. So Canon has disabled that app so it doesn't even work in the video mode. If you flip it over to photo mode, it comes up, it connects just like the R5, but in video mode, nothing, okay? So I was kind of looking for a solution and I found one that I'm actually gonna be testing. So I wanted to kind of share with you guys my findings and I also keep you updated as I use it just to kind of see um, in terms of latency and just kind of making sure it's doing exactly what I'm thinking it's gonna do, okay? So this is the set guys and it's simply just a wireless HD transmitter and receiver. So um, obviously you don't have to be married to this set in particular. I want you to do your own research, find something that works for you. This set was about $129. Um, and one of the things that made me purchase this particular set is because I think it had like one or 0.1 or something like that of latency. I'll put the exact information um, in the final video, whatnot. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was pretty low, which when, you, when you're actually creating a wireless feed from your camera, you want that latency to be super low just so that, um, like even if, even if you're using the, the app that comes with the, the R5 um, on the video side, like it's still like a, a delay of some latency in there in terms of um, what's being filmed and what's coming across on the screen. So in my initial test, this is very, very close to real time, like to the point where it's actually a little better um, than the Canon app, okay? So in this box, guys, you will find two items, okay? Uh, you will find the actual transmitter and you will find the receiver. Both of them look the same, but you will be able to see which is which because it has the actual letters TX and RX actually on the device. Okay, so these do have to be powered, but the good thing about that is, is that the previous video that I made talking about um, the power bank, so both, both of these power banks does work to be able to power these as well as um, it can also power the external monitor that I picked up. So what you would do is you would connect this to the USB-C, you will plug this in into the camera. If you have a full HDMI, you can use that. Um, this company ended up sending an adapter that, which is crazy, it already broke. So I ended up having to get a different adapter and I'm glad it, it broke in my hand just because I would hate for this to happen if it was pouring it. Uh, it was actually already connected to my camera. So I just kind of scrapped that. So they do include that in the box as well as an HDMI to mini HDMI. Uh, which my monitor is the external monitor that I found. It does require uh, a mini HDMI connection, okay? So these are the cables that I end up picking up. Just like I said, I wanted to make sure that I would have a better connection from the camera to the device once I powered it. Angled the perfect way to be able to fit into the camera while I can connect the transmitter here at the bottom. And then the same thing on for the receiver being able to, I, I got a separate cable for that just so I can kind of have a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more cord when I'm actually connected that to the monitor. So this is not gonna be the neatest, but you have to find out your own cable management once you set it up, okay? So here at my desk, um, this is the, the OLED monitor that I picked up to test out with uh, this particular setup because I wanted something that, that I can kind of use in the field that if I needed to give it to somebody or just have it set up where we can have a feed, that's if you don't have a TV. So if you already have a TV or something like that that has an HDMI connection, you can use this without even have, having to buy anything extra. But if you're out in the field, if you're doing something outside, then this will be a good option. And I also, I bought actually a couple of them just to kind of test and I'll send back the one that I don't use. This one is a little bigger. So this is a 15 inch and it's also a touch screen. Um, so let's start off with the smaller one, guys. All right, so in order to hook this up, what you'll do, take the receiver. Like I said, they do send you um, this connection, but I bought my own. You go ahead and, and plug this up right into the um, HDMI to this one, and this goes to a mini HDMI. So I'm gonna connect this to the monitor, and let me go ahead and turn on the second camera just so you can kind of see what's happening here um, on this, on the lens camera here. Make sure it's in focus. Yep, so this piece here, is going to connect right into the monitor. Okay. And this particular connection here 
it comes with the USC, USB-C that's going to connect directly to um, this particular device here, the receiver. And then this is the core, this is the piece that you would need to connect to a power source, which like I said, the portable banks do work for this. Um, and then the monitor has to be powered too, which the bank can also power the monitor and this device at the same time. So let's go ahead and plug in the bank here. So that's plugged in. So you see, we do have a solid light saying that it is connected. So now let's just go ahead and give the monitor some power. Um, this particular portable monitor does come with uh, some a USB-C to USB-C cable. I'm sure you maybe have some from previous stuff that you've done, so you can just use that if you need to. Um, so I got that connected there. So as you can see, the monitor just flipped on. And once we get to the startup screen, so now this particular um, receiver is ready for a connection. So the good thing about this is like they do give you instructions you can kind of connect. Um, they give you like an IP address you can connect to the Wi-Fi of the particular transmitter and you can change the signal that is coming across because this can send a signal up to 4K. But if you find like the data rate or your camera is, is a little bit more lagging than you would like, you can also download the resolution that's actually coming into this particular device. So now for the camera side, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and hook this up here. Go ahead and plug this in and then I will go ahead and plug this into the R5C that's right here, okay? So give me two seconds. So here is the R5C. As you can see, I have just plugged that into the HD, the, the micro HDMI port. And we'll take this other end and just plug it into the other power bank that we have here that we already talked about um, using the R5C, okay? And actually, let's power on. <laughs> got to power on the camera in order to uh, get the feed coming in. All right, so I just turned that on and you will see that it just popped up, okay? So once you have the monitor um, plan, I'll actually, I'll have, because I'm, I'm filming with the camera as well as, I'm filming the screen here and of course with the, the studio camera here. So I'm gonna try to move around just so you can kind of see, put them on the same screen there and see what happens in terms of latency, see if it feels like it's coming across like close to real time, or if it's, or if it's manageable. Because I think for me, just kind of looking at it, um, just looking at my mouth and that type of thing, it, is, it does feel manageable in terms of being able to kind of see the action real time. Obviously, you can't pull focus from this device, um, but that's okay. Um, but you're still able to get the feed. And the good thing is about this particular monitor as well, is that if you were to do playback, you can send playback to this monitor and you can also get audio because this does have speakers. The speakers are not that loud, but it does have audio for you to be able to kind of at least hear the scene if you needed to hear the scene. So now you have a mobile solution, a wireless solution to be able to hook up and being able to kind of get the picture in. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch out this 13 um, inch because this is an OLED and the colors are a little off guys, so don't be, uh, scared of what it looks like because the, the calibration between the, obviously the camera and it filming this monitor is not what it looks like to me in person. It, it looks pretty good to me in person and it does have um, a way to be able to tweak the settings within the device within this particular monitor to be able to change the color temperature um, because I think right now if I look here, I can think the default color settings is about 6,500, you can take it up to 93, and then you can also go to a user mode where you're able to kind of dial in your colors to, to see what you got there, okay? So like I said, I'm gonna switch out the 13 inch to the 15.6 inch monitor and this particular one and kind of see what we got, okay? So I just disconnect that, slide that over. So this one is made a little different. Um, obviously it has this little piece at the bottom that it just sits on the desk here. And then it's still light too. Both devices are pretty light um, in terms of like how they weigh. So I'll just slide this right here and plug everything back in. Okay. 
Okay, we see it in power back up. And there you go. So as you can see, you can, it wasn't muted. So the, the audio from the camera is actually coming through the monitor there. All right, so let's see. So there you have it, guys. Um, I'll go ahead and disconnect this just so the echo won't be distracting there. But um, I'm pretty happy. I have a shoot coming up this weekend, so I'm excited to be able to kind of really test this out and put it into action just to kind of see um, how it works, how the client enjoy just having this screen, this portable screen um, on set to be able to kind of view what we're doing and obviously make adjustments and playback, all that type of stuff with talent if need be. I did find um, with testing both of these two monitors, um, but once again, guys, I paid for all of this on my own. These companies, I have no ties to these companies. I can kind of tell you which ones they are if you're interested. But like I said, I'm not married to what you get. As long as it works for you, that's what's most important. Um, but if you wanted me to, to tell you which ones I actually have, I can do that. So like I said, this is the 13 inch um, OLED panel, okay? And then this is a 4K touchscreen. Um, this is not OLED, I forgot what, I'll put what type of panel this is. But this company does make a battery powered um, 4K monitor that's also touch because this particular screen is not touch screen. So I did go ahead and purchase that one. I'm gonna send these two back um because it's the the 4k one that i did purchase is battery powered and it's an oled um, i don't know if you guys are able to see a difference in between the picture on this screen which is 4k and this is actually 1080. but other than that excited to test out these transmitters and like i said just look for something that has low latency guys and that you can kind of connect uh, via hdmi to be able to get the signal from your r5c or even your r5 i've tested it on both and both work just fine All right, talk to you soon, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.